Hey guys, John here. So the biggest question I always get when I do these courses is where can I get access to the source code? So I obviously can't upload that here on YouTube. So I've made that available for you over on BitTorrent. And along with the source code, you'll also be able to actually download the videos uh, to your computer so you can have them forever. So if for some reason something crazy happened and I decided to delete them or YouTube kicked me off of their site or whatever, it wouldn't really matter for you because you would have all the source code, you'd have all the videos, all everything essentially that I've created for the course you would have on your own computer. So I've created a link in the description where you can find that stuff over on BitTorrent. Please consider going over there, supporting me that way. I'd appreciate that. Also, please consider uh, making a donation here on YouTube using the fan funding. This is how or one of the ways that I'm able to keep all of the videos that I'm doing and releasing here on YouTube for free by those who are able to pitching in and allowing me to do that. So please consider that. And if you need access to any of the resources that I use through everything that I do online, coding, releasing videos, etc., you can head on over to johnmorrisonline.com slash resources and I have a whole slew of all sorts of different resources from hosting to different uh, tutorials and just everything over there that I use. So uh, again, johnmorrisonline.com slash resources. All right, on to the lesson. Hey, John Morris here and in this video we're going to talk about how to update records using PHP and MySQL. Now, again, we're going to show you MySQLi and PDO, uh, and as in our previous video, the actual PHP for this isn't going to change. It's simply the SQL query that's going to change. So that's what we'll spend the majority of our time on. So let's go ahead and just dive into this. So the first thing we do, again, is set, set our database credentials. Uh, we've set our time here. I don't actually need that for this. That's just left over from before. So we'll get rid of that. And then we have our query here. So the query that we need to use in order to update a record is the, lo and behold, the update command. So we're going to do update. We're going to do the name of the table. Now again, you'll notice that all of these queries have a pretty similar structure uh, in terms of overall. So I'm going to do whatever command that you want to do. So for getting data, select. For inserting data, it's insert into. For updating data, it's update. When we get to delete, it'll be delete. And then you set the name of the table, and then you deal with your uh, your values. So when you're dealing with a uh, select query, that's when you would get into specifying if you want to search for certain or look for certain values, or you want to get certain rows, or however you want to deal with that. When you're doing insert into, that's when you set your field names and then you set your values. Here, what we're doing is we were going to use a set command in order to set certain fields or certain columns to certain values. Okay, so again, these are records that already exist. So we're not creating a new record, we're updating one that already exists. So we're going to set, in this instance, our post title to test four. Uh, we're going to set our post content to test for content and our post name to test underscore four. And I'm going to change the ID to five here. And then once we specify what we want to set and you don't, you don't need to specify something for every field. If you don't want to change a particular field, you don't need to add it here. You'll notice that I don't have the post date field in here anywhere because I want to keep the post date field the same. All I'm actually doing is updating the content, right? So uh, again, set, and then we do our uh, uh, column name equal to whatever we want the new value to be, All right? And then we have a where clause where our ID equals five. Now, when you do a query like this, uh, off the top of my head, I can't think of a scenario outside of you just want to completely reformat a table to have one set of values, but uh, pretty much every, for normal usage, every time you use update, it needs to have a where clause. Because if you don't specify a where clause, uh, specify a where clause here, 
what's going to happen is this is going to update every single record in your table with whatever you set here, okay? So you need to use a WHERE clause in order to specify a specific row that you want updated, okay? So this is one of the reasons why we use IDs for all of our tables because in it makes it easy for us to then specify exactly what row we want to update. And in the context of, for example, let's say a content management system like WordPress, uh, the way the workflow works is we first create a post. And when we create it, that's going to create it in the database. And it's going to then, uh, again, as we've seen using auto increment, it's going to set an ID for that particular post. Now, when we're in the edit screen, we're in the ed when, we're, when you're in an edit screen for an object, you are editing an existing object. So you already have the information about that object, including the ID. So when you create your form, it's, it's trivial for you to be able to pass through what uh, the ID of what record you want updated for that particular object. So it makes using this or, or, or doing this where clause very easy because you already know what post you want uh, edited, you have its ID, so you can just pass it to your processing script, and in your processing script, then you can use it in this WHERE clause. Okay, so this WHERE clause always needs to be there, and that's why we use IDs to make that a lot simpler. It's, in fact, it's going to be similar when we get to delete as well, but uh, again, for this case, that's uh, for update. That's why you would do that. All right, so that is our query. Again, we're going to use that same query for both MySQLi and PDO. Uh, you've seen this code a few times now, so I'm not going to get too in-depth with it because it should be familiar at this point, but we're instantiating new instance of our MySQLi object, passing in our database details here, checking to see, make sure we're connected. If we are, we're processing our query. And again, see here again, we're using the query method and we're passing in our query that we created up here and we're printing the results. All right, so we'll save that. We'll head over to our page here and refresh. You'll notice we get a one. And again, we were updating ID number five. So if we come over here and we reload this, you see number five right here. It says test three, test three content, test underscore three. So if we reload this, you can see now ID five says test four, test four content, and test underscore four. Okay, so we can see that that has been updated. All right, so let's head back over. Let's change this all to test five now so we can see the change. And let's go down here to our PDO and we'll run the same query. All right, so down here in our PDO, you can see, again, this is should be familiar to you, connecting uh, in the exact same way, setting our attribute to throw errors in the exact same way. And here we're running our query using the exact same query method we've been using, just passing in our new query, okay? So if we head over and let's go to our page. Again, you can see we have test four, test four, test four. We'll reload this. Again, with PDO, it returns an object which has the query in it, which is different from my SQLi but you can see here when we reload the table we have test five test five test five okay so that is pretty straightforward that is how to update records using mysql using both mysqli and pdo so hopefully you enjoyed that and i'll talk to you later